What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Except for murder. Sin City provides a steady stream of homicides, from the mundane to the most bizarre, that keeps its teams of crime scene investigators busy 24 hours a day. Since its creation over seven years ago, CSI remains one of the most popular shows on television, imitated by many, but equaled by none. So let's go behind the scenes and see what goes into one day of creating not just a TV show, but how television has made the CSI way. Before the cameras start rolling, a team of writers and producers have to create a story, write the script, and prepare it for shooting. Okay, shoot. We either start with a great piece of forensics that we've read, uh, some story that we've read, some true um, crime. Our daily routine uh, as writers for the show mostly involves breaking stories, and by breaking stories I mean we have to figure out what happens in a beat-by-beat, scene-by-scene way. The concept is, is we, all day long we sit around here and talk about the story, try to break it out, and basically talk about how to kill people all day long. <laughs> <laughs> to be able to you know, top ourselves from week to week when you have three shows on the air is very challenging to not do dual storylines, you know, take stuff ripped rip from the headlines and make it cooler, and try to take a point of view of the story that we haven't quite seen before in Las Vegas, Miami, or New York. It's not overdrawn dramatically, it's not uh, overly fantastic. So, much, so many of our cases are based on real crimes. Um, and it's just amazing how many different ways people can kill each other. If there's one thing you learn on this job is that human beings are capable of anything. We have pretty long hours. Television, television almost always has very long hours. For television writers, they have extremely long hours. My job is 24-7. I work almost every weekend. I get to work around 9 o'clock in the morning and probably go home at 11 at night. The first year or two of putting the show together, however, took it was very difficult. It took a lot of hours, and there was mistakes made, and we, we learned as we went. And and uh, now we have it down to a pretty a pretty solid uh, program. You pick your gun up tomorrow. You can do that. <laughs> the thing at CSI, you're allowed here, which I, I just can't get enough of. Um, is that you, you? We can do a funny episode one week, and then a really dark episode the next. Hey, Nick? Yeah? I think I found a toupee. Our Vic may be bald. Thanks, that will help me distinguish it from the other severed heads I find out here. The show itself is extremely dense in terms of the amount of material. It's almost twice as much material as other shows have, and you're cramming it into a, a very compact space. The biggest challenge for me working on CSI is constantly coming up with new forensics that we haven't used for each episode. We're not only competing with the 150 episodes that we've already done, but we're also competing with two other CSI shows plus numerous other forensic shows. And because the, the forensics is kind of like the star of the show, it, everything falls off the forensic. So you can have a great story but if you don't base it around the forensic trail, it's not gonna work for this show. I can't just make shit up. And that's a real drag because I love <laughs> to make stuff up and I'm really good at it. And here it's like, well, would that really happen? And I go, no, I made it up, but it's cool. And I'm like, well, you know, we can't do it if it couldn't really happen. Even after the final draft of the script has been written, story issues can still come up during filming. That's why there's always at least one writer on the set, sometimes more. Well, you know, they always say that writing is rewriting. And that's just as true, if not more true, in television. We also do a fair amount of uh, rewriting on the set. We tweak the dialogue so everyone is comfortable with it and it works and it's dialogue the actors, you know, feel comfortable putting forth but also sometimes uh, holes in the plot become apparent when you're actually filming. And now we always have a writer on the set, which a lot of shows do not have. Um, and we didn't at the, at the beginning, and then I realized well, we have to have a writer down here because we're gonna have some, in some cases, make wholesale changes. And I go over there to yeah. basically do that deed, do the... It gives us an ending, which I don't think we really had. Yeah. You know? 
Yeah, and well, and it gives us resolution, mm-hmm. Heather and me. Right. Mm-hmm. We did have to just rewrite the last scene because the, when I wrote it, the, um, the the location changed from when I wrote it. I wrote it for like 35 guns, and there are only five, and so the dialogue didn't match the scene. So Marg and Georgia and Alec and I quickly rewrote the four lines. The writer comes in if we have any, asks if there we have any issues with the script or any changes or ads we want to make, and it's been you know, a very collaborative experience. We can be very spontaneous about that because we have to be. Yeah. You know, the cameras are turning. We have eight and a half days to film an episode. And uh, you don't have time to run back in the writer's room and start putting out new pages. You have to do it there. I came to work thinking I was going to say some lines. And by the time we started shooting, which was about half hour after I got to set, they changed all the dialogue. You have to kind of always just be prepared to change direction in the water. Um, and you, so you don't want to be too prepared.